Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about vegetables that your dog can and can't eat. First up we have carrots. So carrots are a great snack for your dog to have. They're crunchy, which is good for their teeth. They're fun for them to eat. You can have them in the fridge so they're cold if it's summer. And they just overall are a sweet tasting, nice snack for them that isn't very bad for them. They're also high in fibre and beta carotin, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, which produces vitamin A. Just make sure that you slice them up for small dogs and don't leave your dog unattended because they could be a choking hazard. Another healthy snack for your dog would be lettuce. So even though you don't expect them to eat leaves, they actually quite enjoy them. Especially iceberg lettuce, it's kind of got that crunchy like texture to it. So a lot of dogs will actually really like lettuce. My own dog Beauty loves lettuce. Whenever I'm using it, she always eats a leaf or two. I give her the leaves that are kind of wrinkly on the outside that you know you don't want to eat yourself, but you don't want to throw them out. So she's a perfect lettuce garbage disposal. Just make sure if you're introducing lettuce to your dog for the first time that you don't let them eat too much because it can upset their stomach. But if they're okay with it the first time, you can increase it a little bit the next time. And over time, they'll be perfectly fine with it. Bell peppers are another one of Beauty's favourites. They're crunchy, they're sweet, they're juicy. The red ones, yellow ones, orange ones and green ones all have slightly different tastes to them. So Beauty absolutely loves these and I use them in cooking quite often. So whenever I'm cooking, she gets a little bit of one. If your dog is a bit on the heavy side but needs treats for encouragement, peppers are a great way to do it because they're crunched up really quickly so they're not like taking ages to eat them, but they're also really sweet and rewarding so they will work for them. Another tasty salad item for your dog would be cucumber. So once again, it's crunchy, it's got an interesting texture, it's juicy. In the summertime, put in the fridge, it's nice and cold for them, it can help them cool them down. Just make sure not to give them more than say two or three little slices of it because if you give them a full cucumber, firstly, it's a choking hazard, but secondly, they can get an upset stomach fairly easily from cucumber. Uh, a lot of people have said that their dogs have had pretty bad diarrhea after, so it's up to you. Brussels sprouts, although not harmful to your dog, may be harmful to your sense of smell. No matter how much you give them, it is very likely that they're going to develop a lot of flatulence and their smell will probably drive you out of the house. So you can share Brussels sprouts with your dog, just make sure that it's not much and you've got those windows open. And the exact same as the Brussels sprouts, basically cabbage is just giant Brussels sprouts, so it has the exact same effect. So just make sure that if you were going to give it to them, give it to them either very small amounts, or have your windows wide open, or, you know, opt for peppers or carrots instead, because they're a lot safer. Bananas, which are a vegetable, yes, are a pretty good snack for your dog, but only as a treat. They're very high in sugar, but they're sweet, they're soft, they're good for dogs that maybe don't have many teeth, or that are a bit older and can't chew things as much. They're something nice for them to have as a treat, but shouldn't be a major part of their diet. In the summertime, I like to mash up bananas and then freeze them because then it's kind of like a dog ice cream, per se. So they're really good for that as well. Dogs can eat broccoli raw or cooked, but just make sure there's no seasonings, no oils, no any sort of sauces or things on them. Just plain broccoli and they will absolutely love it. Like with all foods, just make sure to introduce them slowly because if you eat a lot of broccoli in one go, sorry, if the dog eats a lot of broccoli in one go, they can have some gastric upset in their stomach. So just make sure to introduce it slowly and if they're having any issues, just stop feeding them that and opt for something else. Very similar to the broccoli, cauliflower can also be fed cooked or raw. Again, just don't season it, don't put anything else on it, just plain. And make sure that you're feeding it in small quantities at first to let them get used to it. When you cook cauliflower, it does get very, very soft. So again, it would be great for, say, an older dog or a dog that doesn't have many teeth left and stuff like that as a treat or as a snack so that they don't have to chew it so much. Green beans are my absolute favourite vegetable to give a dog when they're raw, when they're cooked, steamed, boiled, anything you want, the dog can have them. Even canned ones, as long as they're plain, dogs can have green beans. They are a fantastic treat and you can even have them in through their kibble or in their wet food, etc. Just to add some variety and to get a little bit of more healthy vegetables into them. Again, during the summer, I love to give frozen green beans. And sometimes I put them into a bowl of water so they're kind of bobbing around the place. And then my dog and my mother's dogs can go kind of bobbing for apples style, but for green beans. And they love them. 
Sweet corn itself is a very good snack for dogs. They will like it, they enjoy it. It's sweet, it's tasty, it's crunchy. However, it must not be on the cob. I am in a load of vet groups on Facebook and I have just an interest in vet things because my friend is a vet nurse and yada yada yada. And nearly every single week, I will see someone saying that they had to remove a cob of corn from a dog's stomach because it got stuck and the dog was unwell and had to have an operation to get removed because they cannot pass it normally. A lot of people will give the dogs corn cobs after they've eaten the corn off them to let the dog chew on it and they think it's great and the dog gets too excited and swallows it so just don't risk that. Just give them the loose corn from the cob like the kernels themselves without the actual cob itself. Peas are another good snack for dogs, so they like them frozen, they like them raw. Uh, Canned ones can sometimes have added salt, so don't do them. But fresh ones, frozen ones, as long as, again, they haven't been uh, seasoned in any way, are perfectly fine for dogs. Once a week or so, I'll add, say, a tablespoon or two of frozen peas into Beauty's food so that she can have just something interesting, something different to nibble on that has a different texture, is sweet and tasty, so she doesn't get bored. Celery is another vegetable that is potentially good for dogs' teeth. Because it's crunchy, but it's not terribly hard, they can use it as like a toothbrush of sorts. So when they're crunching on it, they remove all the built-up plaque off their teeth, and they end up with a lovely, shiny smile and good breath. Too much celery can cause upset stomachs, however, so you wouldn't want to be doing this every day or even every second day. Maybe once a week, give your dog a little bit of celery. Next, we have zucchinis, which are also called courgettes. Zucchini is found in a lot of human dishes and is absolutely delicious, so a lot of people would have it on hand and want to share some with your dog. Just make sure, if you're going to share it, that you do not have it seasoned or oiled in any way. Raw, cooked, steamed, whatever way you want to give it to them, that's no problem at all. Just make sure there's no additives. When it comes to potatoes, the answer is a little bit more complicated. Raw potatoes contain a chemical called solanine, and this is toxic to most dogs. However, if you cook a potato, you reduce the level of solanine in it, therefore it is then safe, in small amounts. So raw potatoes should never ever ever be fed, however cooked potato can be fed in small amounts as long as there's no butter, salt, milk, cream, etc. that you use as seasoning on it. People are a bit torn up when it comes to spinach. On one hand, raw spinach is very high in nutrients, it's very good for a dog, however it can be difficult for a dog to digest, and it's high in oxalic acid, which blocks the body's ability to absorb calcium and can sometimes lead to kidney damage. However, on the other hand, a lot of people are saying that the oxalic acid is not enough to cause damage as long as it's fed in small amounts, and if it's cooked, then it's easier for them to digest, however if it's cooked it also loses a lot of its nutrients. So it's kind of up to you yourself to decide. I personally am just going to stay away from it because I don't see the point in possibly risking something when Beauty gets multivitamins and stuff as is. So she's fine. Sweet potatoes are another favourite to give to dogs. You will see them often in dog food that advertises having sweet potato in them. Or you can even find in pet shops that they'll sell little packets of dehydrated sweet potato as treats. The important thing about sweet potatoes is to only feed them cooked, similar to the normal potatoes, and to remove the skin just because it's very tough and it can make it more difficult for them to actually digest. Your dog technically can eat asparagus in that they can consume it, but it's very difficult for them to digest. There's a lot of like undigestible fiber in it, so they'll just be kind of chewing on something, swallowing something, and pooping something out. There's not much benefit in between. Raw asparagus, if fed to them, can pose a risk for intestinal blockages because it is, again, very tough. They may just bite it into small enough pieces to swallow whole. Uh, However, if you cook it until it's soft, it is a little bit better for them. It's not ideal. It's not great. I personally would just avoid it because I don't see the point in risking something for something that has so little value. Because there are so many different species of mushroom, you cannot outright say yes or no. As a general rule, wild mushrooms or mushrooms that you do not know what they are, are not safe. Do not let them eat them. There are so many toxic varieties that are bad for both people and for dogs. You don't want to risk that. 
However, most of the safe mushrooms that you would find in a shop to buy and eat yourself are also safe for dogs. The best bet would be to buy the mushrooms that you are going to be eating yourself and then look up that specific genus of mushrooms. I don't know if genus is the correct word. And see if that specific mushroom is safe or not for your dog. My personal thoughts on mushrooms are that they are cave-dwelling Satan spawn, so I personally do not want them in the house, so Beauty will never even see one. So I have no idea. She's just not going to eat them at all, because I will not eat them either. Every single part of an onion is toxic to dogs and has the potential to kill them. So this includes the onion itself, the leaves, the juice, any sort of powder you might get from them. So like onion powders, onion granules, beauty scratching yourself beside me. Thanks, buddy. You picked the right time. Uh, they are absolutely toxic and should never be given to a dog. It does not matter if they are cooked or raw. They should just never be given. The reason why onions are so bad for dogs is because they can cause red blood cells to be destroyed, which will then cause anemia in your pet. If your dog does happen to get into a very, very, very small amount of onion or something that had onion powder, such as a pizza crust or such, just keep a very close eye on them, make sure they're okay, and if you have any sort of doubts whatsoever, go straight to a vet. If they've eaten something that had packaging that says what the ingredients are, make sure to bring that with you. Avocados are another food to avoid. Avocados contain a chemical or toxin called persin, which is known to be extremely poisonous to dogs and can lead to fluid building up in their lungs and chest, which can lead to breathing difficulties, oxygen deprivation, and possibly death. On top of this, the avocado pit itself can be a choking hazard because dogs will take it, they will chew on it, they're curious animals, they want to have fun, and then they will choke and again, possibly die. And last but not least, one of my personal favourite foods to eat that poor beauty will never get to try is rhubarb. Rhubarb is toxic to dogs and to cats. Uh, the leaves and the stems, they can cause vomiting, diarrhoea, irritation around the mouth, so the poor dog will be like rubbing at their face constantly. And it's just overall a very bad idea. Some sources claim that if the rhubarb stems are cooked, that they are no longer poisonous and they are safe for a dog to eat. But as I've said before, are you willing to risk it? The dog is not going to require rhubarb. So if you want, you can cook some rhubarb. You can give it to your dog. You can see how they go. But if it goes badly, you've basically risked a lot for very little. You can easily give them a carrot or a bell pepper, a few slices of cucumber, or just a pat on the head and go, sorry, buddy, not today. I just don't think the risk is worth it. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my absolute best to help. If you have any other vegetables that you can think of that you are curious about whether or not dogs can eat, leave them in the comments below as well. And I may or may not make a second video talking about more vegetables if I have enough in mind. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.